Hey guys, Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook up my 240 volt welder in a shop that does not have a 240 volt outlet. A while ago I did a video and I I put in several outlets that were right above each other. I've got one down here with a with a brown cover on it. It's kind of hard to see. And then directly above it I have another outlet. Now the whole point for me putting these two outlets that close together is they're on separate lines. They're both 20 amp circuits with 12 gauge wire which is for 20 amps. But I'm going to make a device that is called a uh, circuit combiner. I think that's what they call it. They do make a commercial device. I'm going to make my own and that's what this video is all about. So if you look at an outlet, on the bottom you've got the round hole which is the ground. The left side is the common and the right side, the small blade, is the, uh, is the hot wire. Put the black probe in the ground and the hot wire on the small one. I can hold them in there where they make contact. So uh, hopefully you can see that meter. It's showing 124 volts. 123.1. So what I have are two outlets on different lines, supply lines, both supplying 120 volts. Being on separate lines, if I put this bottom one on the hot side of that outlet and the top one on the hot side of its outlet I have 245 volts in this case so combining the two outlets I can get my 240 volts now I know I have two 20 amp circuits there if I build a combiner that will handle 20 amps I should be in good shape and be able to set up a 240 volt socket using those two outlets. And the reason I put them so close together is so that I can put this box right here on the corner of my bench and plug my welder into it. Or I can use it out in the carport area where I have those other outlets that are right on top of each other. And I can get 240 volts out of any of those up to 20 amps. I'm going to show you how I'm going to build the box and then I'll demonstrate how I use it. So here's the supplies that I have for building this combiner box. And there's a couple of companies in the U.S. that actually make these things and sell them. Those boxes are a little more complicated than the one I'm going to build. A lot of times they'll have a circuitry in there to where you can push a button on the box. It'll light up if you've got the proper outlet. In my case, I don't need those features because I know that my outlets are on separate lines because I put them in. I know that both of mine are both 20 amp circuits with 20 amp breakers. All right, so I bought this metal, this is an outdoor weatherproof box. It doesn't have to be a weatherproof box, but it uh, will work real good in this particular case. I bought a couple of extension cord plug-ins. These are 15 amps, and then I also have some just standard scrap pieces. These are both a foot and a half long of extension cord wire. So I know that the gauge in this wire and these plugs are both only rated for 15 amps. But these cords are so short they're only a foot and a half I, I think I'll be fine. And I'll put links to this stuff in my description if you're interested in having a closer look at what I got. A 50 amp 250 volt plug-in and this will go with the plug that I just installed on my small inverter stick welder. The bottom one will be a ground and then two hots. 3 8 inch, half inch knockout. They go in this box and they will uh, keep the wires secure so they don't pull out.
if you look at an outlet and the ground is on the bottom the right blade which should be the skinny blade on the outlet box is the hot wire the left blade which is the bigger slot is the neutral I've wired the green to the ground which is the round one if you look at it this way the upper left is the hot the white wire is not used it's just been completely cut off I cut it off of both ends of my leads here so I'm just using two wires the black for the hot and the green for the ground so make sure that you wire that accordingly when you wire in your plugs So I got the ends put on and then I'm just double checking. I'm taking my multimeter on continuity and I'm going to check the upper left blade should be the black wire and it is. Just to double check I'm going to check my ground on the round blade on the bottom and that should be the green and I checked both cords just to make sure I got them wired properly I've got both of my leads that I built with two wires a ground and a hot wire coming into my box my stress reliefs are clamped down so I've got plenty of wire in the box to work with and then right up here I've removed the screw. There's a green screw. Since this is a metal box, it needs to be ground. So what I've done is built two bare wire copper leads coming off of this grounding screw. So I'm going to screw this down into the bottom and then I'll pick up from there. Okay, I've got that. Those two grounding wires screwed down to the bottom so that the case will be grounded. And then I'm going to take both of these green wires coming from my wires incoming and use a wire nut to connect those two to one of these ground wires. So this way both ground wires coming in are wired together and then grounded to the box, which is a must for having a metal box. That way if one of these hot wire leads comes loose and touches the side of this box or just touches anything, you're not going to get shocked using this device. And now I've got three wires. I've got a ground that's coming off the box and two hot wires. One hot wire from each outlet. And those are going to get connected to the three leads on this. Two hots, 110 hots on each, or 120 in this case and then a ground. So let me get that wired up. Okay, there we go. One hot goes to one blade, the other hot goes to the other blade, and my ground goes to the ground. And they're all labeled. The two hots, it doesn't matter. You could put them on either side. So let me uh, tuck this all down in there and neatly tuck that ground wire out of the way. Screw the top on, and then we'll be ready to plug this in and do a little bit of testing. So let's do a quick test before I plug it in just to uh, kind of confirm that it's wired up properly. So I should have ground to the box to the outside. Okay. So the box is ground, shouldn't have anything on these, so I don't have a short. Alright, let's plug it in see what happens. It doesn't matter, I just want my cords to be untangled. Alright, nothing exciting yet, so that's good news. 
this is basically exactly the same thing that's going on inside the breaker box when you have 240 wired in only it's well it's a little bit different because that's one single breaker whereas this is using two separate breakers to the ground and either side should give me 120 volts 124 can you see that yeah you can see that 122.7 uh, on that side 123.1 on that side now one thing that's uh, added into this equation is a uh, one of these circuits runs the lights in my shop so if the lights and the draw of my welder that'll be a test I'll have to do if they exceed 20 amps then I'll pop a breaker so I don't know if that's going to happen or not I kind of tend to think that this little welder isn't going to pull that much power but honestly I don't know so now if I connect both hotlines I should see 240 245.5 so I now have a 240 volt outlet well it's a huge plug for such a little tiny welder and we have an on off switch on the back and the fans on blows through to the front well that blows a pretty good amount of air and we got the green light on well so far so good now I just need to find out if it'll actually weld there's a couple of safety features or a couple of safety issues that you may want to consider I don't know the answer to them I may do some further testing to find out what the actual answer is but some people say that it's not safe if you have only one side plugged in one one half's plugged in and this other side could be live but that's not true there's nothing inside the box that's connected get together so I wouldn't be concerned about that uh, one other thing that they've talked about is if you have it all plugged in and you have a short or something happens in in the device that you're running if you pull that pull one side out you could be shocked from it because it's shorted through the device or maybe not even shorted or just plugged in and and turned on might just might just complete the circuit and then allow electricity to flow to this side but that's a simple fix I'm never gonna I'm gonna plug this in to the wall both outlets and then plug my device into it and before I unplug these from the wall whether something happens to my device or doesn't happen to it I'm just always gonna unplug it from the box first and then unplug these two outlets from the wall last and I I, I don't think there's going to be any issues with that that way uh, since I don't know the answer to that one if that's true or not that's a that's a simple walk around easy to easy to prevent but you got to be thinking about what you're doing when you're working with it well thanks for watching guys I appreciate it if you have any concerns or comments or additional information something that I did did wrong or or should do better feel free to leave a comment otherwise thanks for watching guys make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like the video subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys on the next video